surface area. Now, some of you may have seen these kinds of integration formulas before for surface area. Can I have a show of hands? Anyone, has anyone seen them? Anyone? OK, a couple of people, not many. Don't worry if you haven't. It's not a big deal. Like I said in the last lecture, a lot of calculus, a lot of calculus is just taking a curved surface or a curved line and using straight little straight line segments to approximate it and then adding things up and taking a limit. That's all it is. What we would like to do now is use those ideas, those slicing ideas, to, to uh, somehow calculate surface area. Man, be quiet. Please, don't talk. You're not even copying down notes, man. Come on. Fast. It's the last lecture. Oh. It's the last lecture. I keep looking at you and you keep talking. No. Anyway, um, <laughs> it, it's not difficult. It's not, this stuff isn't difficult. Um, all we're doing is using what's known as a frustrum of a cone to approximate a curved surface. So let, let, let's really break it down. Suppose that you've got this real simple surface here that sort of rotate, you, you sort of rotate a little line segment around the axis. Think about the surface that it generates. Right? Well, it's very easy to calculate the surface area just by using, you know, up, by unwrapping it basically and, and working out the um, area of this rectangle. Now, for a frustrum, it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, so over here, you'll see you've got some sort of line there, and the that line, that straight, or well, I guess straight line in a sense, is rotated around the x-axis, and it sort of turns out this surface. Now the area for that frustrum is just given down here. This can be thought of as the slant height, this delta s, and you've got two radii here, y1 and y2. So to calculate the, the area, what, or the surface area, you average the radii and you multiply through by two pi, uh, uh, by pi times the slant height, delta s. Now this, this idea is, is going to basically be how, how we're going to approximate and um, find our surface area. So we'll come back to this. A good question is, would you get this in the exam? The idea, that, and the answer is no. Okay, unlikely. If I cover that up, it looks a little bit like like arc length. Okay, but slightly more complicated. So where does it come from? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, so in on the left-hand side, we've got some sort of surface that's generated by rotating a curve around the x-axis. Now think about this tiny little band in here. So I've sliced, I've sliced the surface parallel to the y, I guess the, uh, I guess the y z plane, right? So you're slicing these things parallel to the plane x equals zero. Maybe that's that's better. Now, what we're going to do is approximate this surface area of this little band by the surface area of this frustrum. All right. So how do we do it? How do we do it? Well, it basically just uses the um, the same idea as as down here. All right, so just to sort of put it in another, in another light for you, oh, I guess we can do it on the other page. Now we've got sort of this, this cross section. So I think of, think of putting a cross section in here, and this whole thing is rotated. Now if you rotate, this 
this line here, about the x-axis, you're going to get a frustrum. So let me show you how that works. So I guess here I'm going to draw this on its side. Okay, I've got a fairly dodgy looking frustrum. So think of um, think of the frustrum having that sort of setup. Okay, it's a pretty bad picture, but ho hopefully you get the idea. Oh, good, good idea, good call. It was on before. It's on. Thank you. Well done. Now, let's look at the area or the surface area of this frustrum. Okay, so to tab it up here, just sort of t tilt it on its side and move it in there. So the surface area of the frustrum is just the following, right? Okay, so the factor of two so, sort of has disappeared. Okay, if you wanted to have it here, you could. Now, how does this work with this, this diagram up here? Well, it's just the following. What's R1 and R2? It's just this. And what's big L? Well, we know big L by the Pythagoras' theorem. It's just that. Now, This gives us an approximation for the surface area of one part of our, uh, of our surface. What we do now is just sum up everything. right? Sum up all the little bits and then take the limit. Now if we do that, then this will actually collapse down to 2f of x, so we'll cancel out with the 2 on the bottom. So this then is how, and it's just a rough sketch. If you really wanted to be you know, super careful about it, you'd say, oh, I'm going to invoke the mean value theorem here and whatnot. But this is actually where it com comes from. You just sum up these and take the limit as the number of slices goes to infinity. Now, don't worry too much about this. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to show you um, where, where this stuff comes from. But let's do a problem and see and see how, how it works. OK, I can, I'll come back to this in a minute. All right, here's a problem. Right now, I've drawn this in just using maple. You probably don't have that. It's, um, sometimes it's nice to have a picture. It's not really super important for this, for this particular problem. So what you've got is everything on the right-hand side of that vertical blue line is rotated and you form some sort of surface. 
Okay, well, it's just a matter, really, of, of calculating the derivatives and doing the integration. So if this is my f of x, let's calculate f dash. I get something like that for my derivative. Now, part of the challenge here again is to somehow do the integration with that square root sign in it. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's, it's hard. In many cases, though, it's simpler in this setting, and, uh, and here's why. Because you have this sort of factor here, and you can sometimes use that to help you out. All right, so let's uh, take the derivative and then work out this square root. Now, the nice thing about this problem is that actually you're going to get a perfect square in here. So if you expand the brackets and simplify, you can actually put everything back together and manage away the square root sign. So if I expand that, simplify the algebra, I can now factor the following. All right, so the nice thing there is that I've been able to manage that square root sign away. So let's, let's get rid of it. All right, so we're in a position now to use our surface area formula up here. So, so surface area is just the following. Guys, can you be quiet? All right, so I'll just put in your f of x from up here. And my region of integration is going to be from 1 to 3. OK, so we're going to get this. All right, so all I need to do now, the final thing basically is to expand the brackets and then do the integration. Now, you'll see that when we do expand the brackets, you're going to get a lot of nice cancellation and the powers are going to be reasonable, um, reasonably well behaved. So I've just expanded it out like this. Mm -hmm. So now all you need to do is integrate those individually. So according to my calculations, you get this. Now the u squared there is used to represent the um, idea that we're calculating an area. Now we don't have any units at the start, so it's just a good idea to, to, to you know, keep it in terms of um, square units at the end. Again, not a very difficult problem. The, the, the most potentially annoying thing is getting rid or managing away this, the square root sign in the integration. So how does that rate on the difficulty scale? Medium. Medium. Also remember the idea that I, I taught you um, yesterday 
where sometimes to manage away the square root sign, you can use like a double angle or a half angle formula if, you, if you've got cosine or um, some other trig identity. Now I'll put this back up in a second. There are also formulae for calculating the area of revolution when you have some sort of parameterization. It's very similar to the other one, except you've just got dx dt and dy dt here instead of, say, um, f prime, 1 plus f prime all squared. We get those in the exam. Again, unlikely. Unlikely. Huh? Uh, no guarantees. My, my, my advice is to look at, say, last year's exam or the year before's and see what happened. Now, you can see in this setup, there's two formulae, one for rotation about the x-axis and one for rotation about the y-axis. Something to think about is... Ah, there you are. What happens in the previous setup where you have y equals a function of x and you rotate it around the y-axis? Okay? The, the example that we just did is when you rotate it around the x-axis. What about a formula for around the y-axis? So I'll leave that as an independent learning exercise.